welcome to our first presentation here at our Stockholm studio featuring Senzyme. And presenting is CEO of the company, Pia Renaudan. Welcome, Pia. Thank you. It's uh, really great to be here. Um, Senzyme is a Swedish medtech company. We are developing and commercializing a tetragraph system, which actually follows the patient's muscles during surgeries. So the doctor knows when it's safe to wake up the patient again. I would like to use the first part of my presentation to, to give you or describe the main reasons why I believe that Sensum is a really interesting company to invest in. So if I start with a summary of the five most important reasons according to me. So the first one is that there is a huge market, there is a, a great unmet medical need, but also in pure financial numbers it's really big. We have a superior product offering. It's the best technique uh, with unique algorithms based on more than 10 years of research and development sprung from the Mayo Clinic in the US. Thirdly, the business model is really interesting. We have recurrent sales and recurrent revenues uh, due to the sensor disposables that are being used with our monitor. We also have a commercial platform. Uh, we now have a, a subsidiary in the US and in Germany. And we have a licensing agreement with Fukuda Denshi in Japan and with Moss in Italy. And we also work with partners in our other top priority countries. And we work very closely with them. So we, are really, we really have a really great uh, commercial platform. And lastly, but not least, uh, the ELT, uh, the ELT is a really uh, comp competent team with a lot of extensive or extensive experience from global commercialization, and we also have a very engaged uh, board of director. So let me start with the first reason: uh, the market. So there are about 160 million surgeries every year in the Sensei markets. And I think you're probably pretty much aware that when you have surgery, you're being, uh, you're being put to sleep, you, you sleep. Uh, what is more or less unknown is that in more than 50% of the cases, the patients are being given something which is called a muscle paralyzing medication. They're really important, but when you do that, you cannot breathe for yourself and you're being intubated. These medications are responsible for a lot of complications. Uh, studies are, are showing different things, but around 30% of all these cases get some type of complications. And one million every year get what is called a critical respiratory event, and that could actually be life-threatening. Doctors are aware of this. Data existed uh, since a very long time. Um, and they know what they need to do. They know that the patient should have 90% um, have of the muscle capacity back before you extubate and take out the breathing tube. But the issue today is that what exists today are really old and analog methods and they are really suboptimal. If you look to the left hand uh, of the slide, you can see that the first one which is still being used is that the doctor is actually just sort of asking the patient if they can lift their head. And this is something the patients can already do when they have 40% uh, of the muscle capacity, so far away from what you need to be. Then you have the nerve stimulation, which is still pretty much used in the US, where you actually stimulate the nerve four times, it's called train of four, and then you will see a movement of the thumb or another finger. And it's up to the doctor to see if there is a fade, if the muscle uh, response is, is getting slower and this is really like flipping a coin so it doesn't help at all. In the 90s there were um, AMD analog techniques started to, to be available and it was much better but still have some, um, some issues with the preciseness and uh, it was also around this time where Professor Soren Brühl started to uh, work on what, what had to become then what became later Tetragraph, so our system. So Tetra system is finally something that can actually respond to the need of, of the doctors. 
It's built on the best technique. It's not me measuring the movement of, of the thumb, but actually the reaction in the muscle, which is much more precise. And it's built on unique algorithms. It has taken more than 10 years uh, from the Mayo Clinic in the US. So what we have today is a easy to use, a very precise and accurate product, which can also be used in all different kinds of of, uh, of surgery, like robotic surgery and laparoscopic surgery. And we also proved in, in Europe, uh, South Korea, Japan and in the United States. This is a picture to show a little bit the, the different players in the market and you have to be up in the right hand side. So you need to have an objective monitoring and it needs to be accurate and precise to be useful for the doctors. And it's not very crowded, there are a few more. Uh, but this is a big paradigm shift that we are going to do now, where we have to move from the older versions to the new, uh, which is already seen as being the new gold standard technique. There's been a lot of publications coming out this year, and Anesthesiology, which is the highest impact journal in this area, this is the current issue, it's out now, and you can actually see that it's our TetraSense, our TetraGraph system, on the first uh, cover, cover page. So this is, this is great. It's also, of course, our study, which is in the journal. And, um, and they thought it was so important. So also, they also did uh, what you can see to the right uh, side, um, sort of uh, uh, paintings or they are of, of bringing out the information in a more easy to understand uh, way as well. Uh, the study in itself is a great study showing uh, tetragraph superiority over the older, older techniques, how much more precise we are. But there have been more studies coming out this year. For instance, an economic health economic study showing that uh, this is a, a hospital in, uh, in Philadelphia in the US, which show that when EMG technique is used, even if you, you don't even care about the, the, safe, um, the safety of the patient, you only need to, to reduce the complications in five patients to be break even in terms of um, eco uh, in economics numbers. So also very important study. And then, of, of course, uh, even though we know that there are complications and that if you monitor the complications, you will reduce the complications, when you get the science, it's really important to be able to show with the documentation, with a, with a specific study, that actually you can link the reduction of the complications to the monitoring. And this is what this study is doing. So, uh, a lot of data, a great product, but also the expert guidelines that are coming out. They're coming out more and more and they are, they, are, um, they, are, they are being more and more strict in terms of the recommendation uh, coming from the, the scientific society to the treating doctors. And one of the latest guidelines w w uh, was actually the British guidelines. They came out during the summer and, uh, and they are just incredibly good and courageous because they are actually saying that you should use a monitor every time you're giving neuromuscular uh, paralyzing uh, medication and you should have a monitor in every operating theater. Uh, so this, this is really, really good and uh, we could immediately see the effect uh, from our distributor in the UK. They have so many evaluations ongoing right now and uh, yeah, it, it, it's of course, uh, it's not needed to have these guidelines, but it, it helps. So the third reason was the, the business model with the recurrent revenues. And this picture is just to sort of share with you um, uh, like the number of operating theater that you can find in, in our market, 170,000 and about 80 million surgeries every year taking place with neuromuscular um, paralyzing agents. So if you just look at full potential, so if all of these operating theater would put in a tetragraph, that would be worth 3.6 billion crowns. But much more interesting, if you look at, uh, at the sensor or if, you, if every oper operation with neuromuscular block would be using a tetrasense, that would be worth almost 12 billion Swedish crowns yearly. So you can see that even if you took just a small part of this, it's, it's really, really interesting. Then the commercial platform. So we exist today in 29 countries. Uh, we have subsidiaries in, uh, in, the, in the US and in Germany. 
and we have a licensing agreement with Fukuda Denshi in Japan and Mos in Italy. And on top of that, we are really working closely with uh, distributors, partners in our other key, key markets, which is, for instance, uh, South Korea and, um, and the bigger European countries and also Australia. So in the US, for instance, uh, we are now 10 people, uh, a commercial team of 10 in the US. Um, Chris Estes is our, uh, is our president. Um, he has a vast uh, amount of experience. He comes from uh, Medtronix, where he has had several uh, top positions, but he has also worked in, in, a smaller, um, in smaller companies. So he's, he's really, really good, been able to recruit a, a, a top team. But of course, we also have Professor Soren Brühl, who is the inventor and also uh, a top key opinion leader in this field. He has published more than, uh, more than 400 publications, it's more now, but, but around there. And uh, of course, he's opening door for us, so that's really good. We have had breakthrough, um, breakthrough orders, and uh, very recently we had a very big clinic in, um, in the US where we placed, um, uh, just to give you an idea, we placed uh, 26 monitors. and and we have a contractual sort of, um, we have a contractual a minimum sensor order on a yearly basis, which is really the way we're working in the US, but this is really good. Um, the subsidiary in Germany was set up in the beginning of this year, and um, Andre Ludwig, the, the sales or the country lead in, in Germany, has more than 20 years of experience in the anesthesia field. Uh, he knows all the top key opinion leaders, but he also knows um, the, the relevant contacts in the GPOs. The GPOs are the, um, the purchasing organizations, uh, which are very important in Germany, not at the level we are right now, but very soon uh, it's also important to have contracts with the GPOs, but he, he knows them. And we are now three people in, the, um, in Germany. Uh, we have had breakthrough orders and uh, we have a lot of evaluations ongoing. So that was my five uh, main reasons to really explain why, why I think Sensum is a really uh, exciting companies, company. So first of all, the market is a huge market. There is a, a true unmet medical need. There, there, is a, there is a problem that we can actually help the healthcare professionals to solve. Um, we have a superior product offering, which has a unique algorithm and is really based on a long, long period of research and development. The business model with the recurrent revenue is very, very interesting and um, you saw the numbers before. Uh, it, it makes a big difference when you can, when you can rely on that, on that re recurrent revenue. And we can also see from, um, it's still early days, but we can still see that the way we sort of calculated this, it's rather, um, we calculated rather on the low end of, of the usage. So uh, we feel very good about that. And then, of course, the commercial platform. Uh, we, are, we now have subsidiaries in two really important countries and great partnerships, so, so we have a really good platform to continue to build from. And, of course, having been able to recruit really good people and we continue to recruit, recruit um, great people uh, together with a really engaged uh, board of directors is really important. But with that, I will move into to financials. Um, we had our um, third quarter report, uh, the best quarter ever. Um, despite the, the pandemic, who has really been, um, has been a little bit tough for us because uh, the last sort of step in the, in the purchasing process is really to do an evaluation. So you are in the hospital and you, tra you educate and train and uh, the doctors are actually using your monitor. And of course, it's been hard. We have not been allowed for, for a long period of time. It's been opening up sometimes and then closed again. Been, it hasn't been easy to get in all the time um, to the hospitals. But despite that, uh, good sales in Q3. And uh, you can immediately see that uh, at, uh, when we increase the sales, we all also get a great improvement in, in the margins. And this is really related to, to, the, to the better sales. During this year, uh, some of the main things that happen is, of course, the, um, the setup of the German subsidiary. Um, we have also seen a lot of publications coming out. Um, we also took the step to, uh, to, to Stockholm Nasdaq main market in, in June. Uh, Korea had some, um, 
reimbursement in more severe patients. Really good for Korea, helps the sales there. Nothing which would ever be needed for the US and Europe, but that was good for, um, for um, Korea. And uh, of course the British guidelines were probably um, a really important part too. We have um, very big ambitions. Uh, ambitions. We, uh, we want to become and we will become the number one, uh, the leader in the neuromuscular monitoring segment with 10% market share. Um, we, have, uh, we will sell for 200 million Swedish crowns in 2023 and uh, we stand steady with this. And um, our vision is actually a world without anesthesia related complications. So um, this, is, uh, this is a big vision and we have a lot to do. But um, of course uh, I would hope that uh, there are more of you that want to join us on this journey. I think it's really, really exciting. So with that, um, yes, I would like to thank you for your attention. Well, thank you so much, Pia, for that presentation. Uh, I just have some questions for you. Uh, I'd like to begin by talking about your sales numbers. You mentioned this past quarter, you had your best quarter uh, ever in sales. Uh, to what do you attribute the success? So uh, there are two main reasons, I would say. And, uh, and first, of all, uh, first of all, the sales are coming from the three different regions, so from Asia, Europe, and, uh, and the US. Uh, equally. We are still in a phase where they can fluctuate, but uh, this time we have from North, so that's really good. And the second is actually that we can see that the sensor, um, uh, the sales of the sensor is, is really good. It's actually better than, uh, than we, um, we kind of calculated on. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is actually that uh, when we have monitors installed, they're being used um, a little bit more than we actually counted on. So, so that's very positive news. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, w what's your strategy to keep up the momentum? So our strategy is actually to continue, of course, to drive the sales. And the main strategy is to drive the sales in the US in, and Germany with our direct sales force. Um, but in the US, for instance, we are also working together with um, uh, distributors. So uh, we signed during this year actually with um, Mercury, Mercury Medical. It's a really good match for us. It's a really uh, well renovated company in the US. So we can actually have a, a, a broader footprint and, and sort of uh, get the traction and, and move faster. So, um, so, so that's part of the, the, um, uh, the strategy in the US. And of course in Europe, uh, Germany is the, the, the biggest and most important market in, uh, in Europe. So that's where we go direct there. And then we continue to work really closely with um, distributors and try to cherry pick and really hand pick the, the best distributors, the, uh, the ones that are focused on anesthesia uh, and are really engaged. And, and we work really closely and we are often out if there are really important um, evaluations. We support, we can even support on site, um, so, so we work like if they were our own. And I think that's uh, that's very important part of our strategy. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned the US, you mentioned Germany. Of mm -hmm. course, these are uh, your two subsidiar subsidiaries. Uh, how do they strengthen the company? So they strengthen the company in, in, uh, in different ways. I think firstly, it's really that you get the control, you know what is happening, you, you can test and try, you learn and you get the, the contact with the, with the physicians, with the doctor, with the hospitals, you, you, you keep the control. But of course it's also financially better, you get a better gross margin, so that's also important. And, and finally, what are your ambitions? Do you, do you have global ambitions, uh, uh, not only in terms of some subsidiaries of course, but uh, market share? Yes, yeah, so we want to take 10% market share of, the, of this market. Uh, we haven't set a date to that yet, but, be, but we believe in the best product that we have and also the, this paradigm shift go, going towards the new technique and the better products. Uh, but also on the existing market, uh, we are small, but we want to be big, bigger, of course, but uh, doing also the right things. So, so we have ambitions, uh, ambitions. We want to be the leader in this segment, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for answering the questions and thanks for your presentation and we wish you all the best for your upcoming work. Thank you. Thank you very much.